Hey guys, welcome to another rig review. So today I have a rig by a good friend of mine called Jonathan Cooper, uh, a rig called Asri, and this is part of his Game Anim book that is absolutely awesome. And if you don't have it and you're interested in being a gameplay animator, definitely go and get it. I'll leave things, links down below. I've been wanting to actually test this rig for the longest time because it looks really, really cool. And I'm pretty sure Jonathan being Jonathan, he most likely tested this thoroughly and this must be a game ready rig. So let's jump into Maya and have a look. All right, so here we are in Maya Asri here. It comes with textures. The textures look really awesome and I don't have any lights whatsoever in my scene. And you can still see that this rig is actually pretty neat. Like the definition and the detail on the textures is really, really cool. No lights whatsoever. So for people like myself that are not great at rendering in Maya, this is absolutely amazing. Now, as usual, uh, we're going to actually start from the bottom up so we can actually see how all these controls work. Before we go into the rig, we find that there is two weapons, two types of weapons here that you can animate. So let's see. Let's put them here, bring them to the side and see how this works. So we have a blade. Uh, let me see. We must have a way to hide them, right? Weapon grip. Oh, OK. OK, so we actually have it here on the display layers right here on the right. So we have the scythe and also the sword which is really, really cool. We can hide the body, we can hide the sword only, all that stuff. So that's really nice. And I guess this has controls on the bottom, on the hilt where you need to actually have it, which is pretty cool. A very simple rig, but efficient. Uh, now we have, let me just check out the scythe because most likely the pivot must be in the same place and it must be in the middle. So you can do things like this. So yeah, pretty, pretty cool. Now, let's look at the rig itself. So we have right here the collision controller. Nice. So this will be where the collision box is. When you export these uh, animations to engine, this is what the engine sees, which is normally like a box around the character. So really cool to see that it means that it's game ready. Um, now, when it comes to the foot, we have the regular controllers and we also have a foot roll. We also have a foot twist and we have a bank. This is more than enough. Sometimes people get a little too fancy, but because this is a boot uh, and boots uh, in boots are actually very hard in terms of their their build. I think that having just those controllers is nice. And what I'm liking about this rig is the fact that there's a lot of simplicity in, the, in this rig. I keep saying in my videos that when it comes to animation in rigs, less is more because you want to focus on the animation itself, not on the controls that you have in order to make it fancy. Controls are great, but especially uh, if you're animating a very complex rig, you should start with as little controls as possible and then build from there, right? Now we have a controller here on the back. This is a weapon and okay. We have a parenting weapon control. Now that's nice. Love to see that. So I'm guessing you can actually parent the weapon to the spine. So you should, if you move the character, the weapon is now parented to the spine, which is nice. Or you have a right grip, left grip. This is great. So this actually makes um, moving the weapon when you actually are moving this hand much easier. So that will be one of the first things that I would do when animating, finding out what kind of animation are you doing? Are you doing a weapon swing or whatever it is? And then you go like, OK, so if I'm actually just if I already have the weapon out, right, and I'm actually swinging that sword, then I'll go here and I'll make sure that yeah, the sword is on the right, the dominant hand, right, right hand normally. And then I'll do my animation based off that. That way I don't have to actually parent anything to anything. I don't have to key this to the hand or anything of that nature. I have to just place the weapon where I need it, which will be something along these lines. And I know most likely you can actually kind of like snap one to the other. This to this and snap. 
it actually goes backwards but you get the idea after that's there um, even with no keys i can start animating this arm and the weapon goes along with it which is awesome this, it kind of saves you so much time all right so after that we have the knees super simple uh, and then we have the hip controller here hip swinger and then we have our hips which are incredibly important and we have an extra channel box controller here which reads skirt follow let's see what that does so i guess the skirt is intersecting here and when i switch on skirt follow most likely you will avoid the intersection much better yeah yeah so having that on all the time makes sense to me uh, to make sure that you can have those forms auto deforms and makes your animation life much easier all right so we have an fk spine right here let me select all the controllers and yeah that looks solid right there this is how I test rigs, right, by the way. <laughs> Just go go nuts on, on this to make sure that uh, you keep uh, the riggers on their toes. Because sometimes so as you are pushing your animations and you're animating things, when you actually get to do, make like a, a very um, extreme move, sometimes the rig breaks or things don't actually hit a certain position. Like if you actually want to make the character do this, for example, for whatever reason, like the rig is limited. So you need to make sure that you can like just do this kind of stuff before you start animating, especially if it's a new rig. Okay, cool. So we have a simple FK spine, but it looks solid. Like, you know, it's really well uh, rigged. I think the weights uh, are really, really solid. I like how the belt stays in place while the um, the corset or the thing in, the, in her waist actually moves quite a bit more. Really cool. Okay, so arms. What do we have in arms? Uh, where is the IK FK switch? Uh, most likely in the hand. So we have, what is that? A hand grip. Uh, and then we must have an IK FK switch somewhere here. Okay, so it's actually on the shoulder. So I'm gonna switch mine to IK because this is how I would animate it and then see what we get from there. So that looks pretty solid. And if you actually raise our arm, we get nice intersection. There's a little bit of a pop right there, but that's probably because I'm not moving the shoulder with it. If I actually were to move the shoulder with it, most likely that will go away. Yeah, seems a bit more solid now. So yeah, really, really cool. Love the drapery, love how he actually deforms to the uh, character. Looks really cool, I like it like it a lot um i'm assuming that this hand grip left and right might be what i call the weapon joint uh this is normally what gets translated or not translated gets exported to game whenever you are animating a weapon so in this case normally the right hand which is the dominant hand gets exported to game and what happens is that when this weapon moves this weapon actually doesn't get exported whatsoever what gets exported is the movement that this controller is doing to the weapon. So it's basically a joint that gets exported to exported and then imported into engine. Whatever that joint is doing, you can snap a weapon to that joint and then you have the weapon moving about. So I'm like I'm guessing this is basically a weapon joint that you then export to game, which again makes it even more game ready. Really cool. And then we have the head. Uh, parenting to world or local makes sense by default local uh, sometimes you want the head to be world uh, very rare but it happens really really cool now are there any hair controls because i have seen animations that look really cool with this rig because the rig has been around for a while and there must be hair controls somewhere for this character so hair yeah, there you go. And fingers, of course. Okay, cool. So, and face controls. Okay, cool. So, it's all under display for those that haven't used the rig yet. So, display hair. We have extra hair controls right here. And now it's a FK chain. Very simple, but very, very effective. That allows you to move this as you wish. Nice one. And... We have little hair controls here for her as well. 
It allows you to move really, really nice. What else do we have? Fingers. We haven't looked at fingers. Let me just reset this. And let's look at those fingers. How are they? Yeah, so this looks very clean. I like this. So you have rotates. Oh. Okay. Yeah, makes sense. Um, and then you have selective of the whole joint. And then I guess you can rotate that finger to give you nice, nice shapes. And do we have a cup control right here? Yeah, we can actually allow the hand to cup, which is cool. Yeah, so we can actually do quite a lot with these hands. They look cool. Now let's look at the face as well. So cool. Her face looks awesome. Yeah. So that would probably be the max that you close the eyes. So there's no intersection. This is cool. Allows you to have a bit of fleshiness, which is also nice. Um, bottom lid also goes over the eye. It looks nice. And then you can probably change the brow shape. Oh, this is the, the eye control. You can probably change the brow shape with these guys here. Oh, that looks flashy. It's nice. Cool. Then you have mouth. Uh, I'm guessing this is the main mouth controller. Open and close. Really nice. You can go above above it if you want to. So there's not like any hard limits. It's always good to know that, to see that. And then you have deformers to actually give you like really nice mouth shapes as you are talking. You really don't need more than that, especially for a game character. Uh, this is hair controllers as well, which is cool. And then we have extra cloth controllers. That's so cool. Like, I love the fact that, you know, uh, John decided to kind of hide all these controllers. So it's not overwhelming. A lot of rigs have everything exposed, which for a brand new animator sometimes can become a little bit overwhelming because you want to play with everything. Having just the basic controllers exposed allows you to focus on the animation as I was talking about in the beginning. So really nice because all this cloth and all the hair and everything else comes as a last pass whenever you are animating these things. So yeah, cloth pass, which is really cool. And then we have twists. Let me just have a look at this thing. Twist controllers. All right. So we have a way to kind of like to be able to twist these things. I think that's really nice. I think this allows you to have a little bit more of uh, freedom, especially with this uh, cloth, because it becomes very is, is very loose. And so having the ability to have a little bit of a of a give in this type of cloth is really nice. As long as it's not too much, because otherwise you're just breaking the arm like this. But I think that having this move a little bit is nice. It's really cool. I guess you have a little bit also in the pants, in the trousers. No, the boots, I guess. The long boots and also here. Yeah, allows you to have a little bit of like, you know, fabric over, over skin. That feeling that you have. Details. Always good to have these things for extra detail. So yeah, overall, really cool rig, uh, really cool game rig, um, probably the best game rig that I've seen so far. Really, really awesome. So massive, massive kudos to Jonathan Cooper for putting this together. I have been wanting to actually see this for a while or to review this for a while and I haven't been able to, but now here we are, finally is done. <laughs> so. As always, links down below for you guys to review this. Also, test it out. And if you do and you like it, like give Jonathan a follow. Uh, if you are interested in being a gameplay animator, definitely buy his book because it's a really, really good book. And it took a long time for him to create this. And that's all I had for you guys. Subscribe, like and comment if you enjoy this content and if it was useful to you in any way. That's all I had for you guys. Major shout out to my Patreons for supporting me every single month here in the channel. And as always, stay well, stay safe. Peace.